Hello, this is Bern, and on today's video, I'm gonna help you make the decision should you let him go. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, and heart centered women how you can attract the man you want and the relationship you crave without the need for gimmicks or manipulation of any kind and as a result of being the best version of you. Now, if this is the first time you're here and you want to learn how to do this without wasting time, make sure to click the subscribe button. Now, if you have been on edge, anxious, frustrated, sad, because you love a man, but you feel internally he may not be the best fit for you, you feel constantly sad, constantly defeated, you fight far more than you feel is healthy, and you've started to become someone that is not really you, you've come to the right place because today's video is all about making the decision to move forward if that's the best thing for you. Now, before I move on with the video, let me just share with you that if you want to learn how to attract devoted men, <laughs> intelligent men, high worth men, I invite you to click on the first link on the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this, and that's a free training that I created for you that can go way deeper than I can on this short video. Now, when you step into a relationship, your goals are to be with him potentially forever. If you're of a certain age and you've gone through a few breakups in your life, then more likely than not, you want the next guy you're with to be your forever after. Now, sometimes things start great or start very passionately and they start going south. And the more emotional connection you have with them or the more physical connection sometimes, you tend to not be able to see beyond what you can see and it's hard to move forward. So the first sign that the guy that you're with is not the best guy for you and you should let him go is that you do not share enough common values. He has a different idea of a lifestyle than you do. He has a different idea of what fun is. He has different kinds of friends than you do and they don't really mesh with each other. Your families don't get along or he doesn't have connection with his family and you do and he resents you for it. Or maybe he's the kind of guy who wants to have fun all the time and doesn't want to invest in planning and in things that are not as fun but can create the sustenance for a relationship to last. When you notice that consistently the arguments are about values being different, it's not that he's wrong and you're right, it's that you're different then when you constantly feel like you have to be the adult, you have to be the one who says, do this. You have to be the one who says, have you thought of this before? And it feels like an immature situation and you're developing this mother-son dynamic that is so painful and the opposite of what you want. That's one clear sign that because you're in two different life stages, you should not be with them. Second sign is he doesn't accept parts of you that are essential and fundamental to your being. For example, you love dancing. It lights you up, it's something you were doing since you were a little girl, and he hates dancing. Well, that could end up working, but let's take it a step beyond. He not only hates dancing, he wants you to stop dancing because he doesn't want to go with you and he doesn't want you to do this on your own. So you have to, in order to be with him, kill a part of yourself that is fundamental to your being a part of you that makes you light up. Maybe he has a different religion than you do and instead of being open and instead of accepting you the way you are, he wants to constantly change you. He wants to debate you. He wants to share why his religion is better or his lack of religion is better. He criticizes you constantly because of it. And again, it's not something that you feel, well, he doesn't like the color pink. I can wear another color because it's not that important to me. It's your religion or it's your faith or it's your devotion to something greater than yourself that he can't see eye to eye and doesn't like it and create, creates a lot of conflict. Maybe it's your profession. Maybe it's your beliefs of some other kind. When things that are part of you can't be accepted by him, this creates a strong dissonance. And if those things are essential to your well-being, to your happiness, to your joy, then again, that's a sign that things are going to be really rocky going forward. There's no need for that. Number three. He's consistently disrespectful and unwilling to change. What does that mean? That means that he gets fired up and in the name of passion or in the name of I'm too spontaneous or in the name of I care too much about you or I care too much about this object, he is verbally abusive or he raises his voice unnecessarily or creates this big drama and the, the more he creates this, the more anxious you get 
the more you lower your voice, the less you express yourself out of fear of being reprimanded, so to speak, as if you were a little child. So when he doesn't have the capacity to extend a level of conversation that is maybe you would disagree on things, but he gets too emotional about it and he disrespects you, that's a clear sign that things are not going well. Now, it's even worse when he goes all out to be emotionally abusive to you, but he then comes back and showers you with flowers and tells you how awesome you are, how beautiful, how he can't live without you. So he's playing this game where he first takes your wings off and then he tries to rebuild them and it confuses you and you go by the last thing he said, which is, but I love you so much and I really want to do better. So he promises you to do better, but he doesn't do better. And your self-esteem and your self-worth keep going down and down. Number four, he threatens you physically or emotionally. He threatens you by saying, hey, if you don't do it the way he wants to, he's going to not talk to you, or he's going to block you, or he's going to maybe go out and not come back for a couple of days so that you suffer the dark night of the soul. And then when you come back, you're so scared that something happened to him and he didn't care to answer his phone or let you know what he, where he was. You don't even know where it's up and where it's down. That's emotional abuse or he threatens you physically. He gets close to you in a way that you know that he, he doesn't punch you, but he acts like if he's gonna punch you. That's a clear sign that things are one step away from you being physically harmed. Next one is he tries to lower your confidence so you won't leave him. So he says things to you about your body, about your intelligence, about your capacity, about your family that makes you doubt yourself because you become like the people you hang out with. So if the person that you love most is putting fears in your mind constantly about your ability to do things, or maybe he tells you that you're not lovable, that he puts up with you, but no one else will. Maybe he tells you that no one will love you the way he does. Maybe he tells you that you're a lost cause and almost like he's doing you a favor. I mean, he may not say it with those words, but whenever he says things to you that consistently lower your confidence so you won't leave, that's a sign that you're with the wrong partner. Now think about this. Fundamentally, you want to ask yourself this question. Do you feel better as a human being overall, not in the moments of depression, not when he's having sex with you, not when he's buying you flowers, but overall, if you take an inventory of your life, are you more confident or less confident as a result of being with him? Are you playing your strengths more fully or less fully? Are you going for your dreams or have you started losing confidence in your ability to go in for your dreams as a result of being in this relationship? Do you connect with your friends with more heart and soul or do you have to shy away from your friends because you're afraid of them asking you the question how things are going and you having to lie to them? Do you consistently put up excuses for his lack of behavior, his lack of maturity, his lack of self-esteem and you put it all on you? The more your answers are yes to these things, the less likely this has something solid to stand on. Whenever I hear from someone who's with a guy that from a distance, it's clear to me, is not the right fit for her. She's getting lower self-esteem, she's doubting herself, her life is starting to suck, her anxiety levels through the roof, but she can't move forward from him. Here's the four beliefs typically in her mind that make her unable to do this. The first one is, I'm too old. Like, almost like if you were to leave, then you're too old to find love again. I've seen women find love in their 80s, in their 70s, in their late 60s, of course in the 50s and 40s as well. But it's never too late to leave someone who doesn't let you be the best version of you, who's constantly trying to hold you back. So that's the first belief. Second belief is no one will love me the way he does. No one will love me so passionately. Again, I have to say it to your face right now. It's bullshit. It's not true. It sounds romantic and it feels intense. And from your perspective, it might be that way, but I'm telling you right now that there will be men if you let go of him, who can love you in a healthier way that is also passionate. Number three, I won't feel this magic with anyone else. I won't feel this passion. I won't feel this amazingness. <laughs> Again, similar to the previous one, you can find this passion, but you can find passion without hurt. Passion without consistent letdown. Passion without disrespect. You can find those things, but the price to pay is to be willing to step up for yourself and love yourself more than you've been loving yourself. And the last one is, there are no good men out there. All the good guys are married. All the good guys are taken. It's not true. 
But the first thing that has to happen for you to even open to the possibility is to love yourself more, raise your self-worth, raise your self-esteem, set stronger boundaries, and then from that perspective, you can weed out men who are not good for you and you can attract men who are drawn to self-worth and who are drawn to confidence in a way that they wouldn't be right now based on where you're standing. Last thing I'll share on this topic is life changes, my dear, with one decision. That's all you need to change your life. One strong decision when you've said, I've had it, it's enough, never again. I choose myself, I choose love, I choose respect, I choose self-worth. One decision can change your entire life. Is it easy? Absolutely not. I wouldn't be recording this video if I felt this is something easy. Might, might you need help from someone? You might need help from someone, that's the truth. Situations that are dysfunctional sometimes require an outside perspective and help so that you can move forward and feel the confidence again you need. But regardless of whether you choose to get help or not, you need to understand that things don't have to be the way they are and you can choose change for the better. Now, if you find that this is a helpful video, this is something insightful for you, this is something create change in your life, then my, I ask you to do one thing. If you wanna take this deeper, go to the first link on the description of this video, click on that link, enter your name and email, and you can start watching my free masterclass right away. Now, if you also enjoyed this video, <laughs> click like or thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Now, if you've subscribed to my channel and you really wanna see more videos of mine, then click on the little bell because otherwise YouTube may not push them to your feed. There's too many videos out there that may be more, I don't know, more fun than this one, but this might help you more. So if you really want to continue seeing my videos, click the little bell to be notified of new videos as they come out. <laughs> Last but not least, if you want help, hand-holding, support, as you navigate through this, and you feel I might be able to help you, then second link in the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me. I'm not a fit for everyone, but when you submit the application, if I feel I can help you, we'll connect, and I'll share with you how that help can look. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much for stepping up for yourself. Thank you so much for believing that there has to be a better way than what you're experiencing. Thank you so much for not settling for less than you believe. Thank you for allowing me into your heart, into your home, into your phone. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.